in here. Okay, here we go. All right, so um, just give me a sec. Let me do the intro. Whoever's talking, mute yourself. All right. Sorry. <laughs> All right, hey, everybody, and welcome to 90-Minute Art Challenge with me, Bobby Chu, and Masei Seki. Hey, Masei. Hey, how's it going? Awesome. Well, you know, awesome now that we're streaming. We had a little bit of technical difficulties, so I appreciate everybody being so patient. Mm -hmm. uh, here is today's subject, okay? It's almost Halloween, so we figured we'd do a creepy, a creepy subject, all mm -hmm. right? It's creepy lighting. Yes, and um, how does this all work? So first, first, where is, where is everybody from? Oh my gosh, thank you so much for having all that patience. I wanna give you guys a big shout out uh, and mm -hmm. let us know where you're from. Also, what program are we using? This is a free program. This is magmastudio.io. If you go to www.magmastudio.io, you can paint and draw for free, uh, just like us. And the coolest thing about this software is that you can paint and draw with up to 29 other people, 30 people all drawing and painting at the same time, having some fun. This has been really encouraging for me, painting with Massey. It's been awesome. Next thing up mm -hmm. here, we have our Instagram handles. You can follow us, Digital Bobbert and Masei Seki on Instagram. After that, I want to explain a little bit about this uh, challenge. Where do you get this photo? Where do you get the photo? Well, we have a Tumblr account. It's 90 Minute Art Challenge on Tumblr. And after that, after you do the 90 Minute Art Challenge, which Really, it just means, hey, 90 minutes, do some art, whatever you've done, post it, 90 Minute Art Challenge on Instagram, and we will show our favorites every week. So I have a bunch to show. First one up, oh my goodness. Very like insane, insane. Mm -hmm. Calm down. My goodness. <laughs> it's so the good. The detail. Yes. I have a little de added, like added on detail, like the tattoo and the button. I didn't chain, even notice like he has this here, 90 over here. Yeah, oh, he, he has a chain. That's awesome. He has the the tattoo, which is fantastic. The hat. The hat. I think that's uh, so good. Right? <laughs> it's not a competition, but I could say that here he, you won this week. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> and this is one of the mm -hmm. older uh, 90 minute art challenges. Yeah, feel free to go back, do them, because we might just show those as well. Love this one. I love the kind of skewed kind of feel to this, as well as mm -hmm. the custom brushes that he uses. Um, mm -hmm. And I the tones. The yeah, the tones yeah. of this artist uh, that they chose to use is fantastic. Really great. Mm -hmm. All right. Vivek. Fantastic. Thank you. Very cute. That was a previous like that one. Extra cute. And this one. Yeah. So cool. And creepy. Yeah, it's perfect for this one. It's great. It makes you definitely not want to smoke. So. <laughs> end up looking like that dude. Traditional. Bold, right? That's fantastic. Yeah. Watercolor. That's, that's a lot of work. This one? I appreciate the <laughs> lollipop, you know? Mm -hmm, that was mm -hmm. great. The <laughs> nice too. Cute. It's very adorable. I like that one. That was great. Yeah. This is an older one, right? Oh, oh, dang. Okay. I haven't, I haven't so had this challenge, but wow. It's, it's from a while back. That's really cool. And then did a bunch of others. The sergeant mm -hmm. uh, study that we did as well. And there you go really really awesome awesome stuff and uh when you do your challenge viewers upload it hashtag it 90 minute art challenge and hopefully we'll show yours next time all right so the other thing about this is this is a big one we changed our discord okay we started using the lightbox expo discord Okay, we're using the Lightbox Expo Discord. And what is the Lightbox Expo Discord? Well, I think um, 
somebody wants to invite you all to the Lightbox Expo Discord, especially tomorrow. Oh, hey everybody, it's Bobby Chu here from Lightbox Expo. We are joining forces with Constant Art Association to throw together a wonderful free Halloween drawing jam on Discord. And we will see you there along with many of the artists behind your favorite movies, games, illustration, and animation. It's okay. It's you know what? There's a live stream. For uh, the Discord people, what was happening was I was playing this little video that I did uh, as, you know, One Punch Man, dressed up as One Punch Man, uh, inviting everybody to the Halloween Discord Drawing Jam brought to us by Lightbox Expo and the Concept Art Association. So it's just a funny little clip, um, just, you know, having some fun for Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah. love to give some shout outs now. So all these places are coming in. And so I want to give some shout outs to Oxford UK, Andy Norton, uh, Chloe, hello world, I guess, from the world. Uh, then we got Philly, we got Germany, UK again, India, Chicago, Costa Rica, all sorts from all sorts of corners of the earth. Awesome. Yeah. Now, uh, one of the best things about doing these, these little streams with you, Masse, is just seeing the different approaches. You know, mm, we, we mm -hmm. both went at this completely different. If people notice the very first tone that we chose, you chose a lighter tone, I chose a darker tone. That's like one yeah. of the big questions, isn't it? Like, how do you start? How do you start your painting? Yeah, definitely it's uh, different for everyone. Um, I think for this uh, study, I did do a different approach from how I usually do it because um, it's like what you're doing right now. That's my usual approach. But this one, I wanted to focus more on the like the really dark shadow that's being uh, casted and separating that from the light from the very beginning. So focusing on the, the shapes that it's made uh, that's made by the lighting. That is so neat because, yeah, I did the exact opposite right mm -hmm. i went dark first thinking yeah i'll use the dark tones to start bringing out the lighter parts of the character and going about it that way so there is no you know right or wrong answer but it is great because it's like we both didn't talk about how we were going to approach this in the very beginning yeah um, I think the uh, the reason why I approached it this way was because last time you you did this approach or something similar to this, and I saw the benefits of it, so that's why I switched over. So it's nice seeing both of us doing different things all the time, and then you know we can pick up on different things. Yes, uh, something about this one that I should mention is um, I think we both decided a couple things right off the bat. I decided to use nothing but the just default brush, the default round brush where you can make it a hard edge or a soft edge. It's the very first brush that Photoshop had probably, mm -hmm. you know, so mm -hmm. I want to do that on purpose because I want to show it's not, all about brushes. I was just talking about, oh, that person has some really great, cool custom brushwork and stuff like that. But really, mm -hmm. it's not necessary. It really isn't. Mm -hmm. So I just want to kind of um, show that today, right? Yeah. Like, do you have a custom pencil? You know what I mean? Do you use yeah. a custom, like, the hairs on your actual traditional brush are all like jaggedy for one and then like <laughs> you know there's different shapes of brushes mm -hmm. but when you paint and draw like traditionally how many different brushes do you use you think oh you're asking me um mm -hmm. uh, i guess for traditional maybe like three or four right three or but four they're, that's they're... quite a lot too uh -huh. Uh -huh. That almost seems like, okay, well, maybe one or two of them are just bigger versions. Yeah, exactly. So that's essentially, if you translate that into digital world, that's just increasing <laughs> and decreasing your brush size. Mm -hmm. 
So it's the um, same brush, yeah. pretty much. Yeah, that's for sure. And uh, I guess what we see on the screen right now, um, this is the beta version. Oh, yes, yes. So we have some add-ons that we're going to be bringing to the public soon. We're going to be opening up a subscription uh, to Magma soon. And with the subscription, not only are you supporting us and this awesome free software, um, but if you do subscribe, if you choose to pay for the subscription, then you would get all the new features, custom brushes, all that stuff, as well as future new features mm -hmm. right <laughs> there's no other add-on kind of purchase after that it's like if you subscribe you're helping us the team helping out the the program as well as getting everything that's coming in the future mm -hmm. it's not it's not available yet <laughs> we're working yeah. on it though yeah but there's some great stuff, stuff so far but I would love to get back into your painting here. Very yeah. interesting. So I'm assuming like this was not your regular approach or where did um, this come from? So this approach, uh, I actually learned um, from many of the schools and classes, especially Jonathan Hardesty, where he tries to, uh, he teaches you to understand shape language rather than the figure itself so look at it from an abstract sort of way where it's like that little light on the nose it kind of like if you squint it kind of looks like a little like a spaceship shaped triangle with these little wings and then if it's the eyebrows it's like oh imagine there's like these mountains so he's he like explains it in a like try to look at it from a different perspective like an and abstract kind of imaginary way Exactly, because um, once you get the shapes right, your whole image will like, you know, it won't fall apart. And so that's kind of like the way I approached this painting. That's really great. Yeah, like looking into, looking into this image, um, there's definitely something about those folds in the forehead that, that feel like something else. You know what I mean? <laughs> it feels like the back of a bug to me or something. You know, if I swim my <laughs> eyes a little bit, like a pill yeah. bug or roly poly. What do you, what do you call those bugs? Roly poly, pill bug, um, potato I, bug. I think I call them potato bugs. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm, I I don't really like potatoes that much, so maybe that's why I associate. <laughs> I tend to call them. The yeah, I tend to call them um, pill bugs. But mm. anyhow. Yeah, your approach here, it was really cool. It's so tight, though. You know, like, I, I looked over, and obviously mine it looks like a three-year-old is starting this. It's just colors everywhere, which is cool. <laughs> That's, like, kind of, like, the mm -hmm. idea. But yeah. then you look over on your side, and it's so tight and, like, kind of graphic. Yeah, I think definitely just trying to find the the shapes like especially the negative shapes so i was um when i was doing this whole thing i was squinting a lot just because um i don't want to get distracted by the, the finer details mm -hmm. yeah so i think that that helped a lot yeah it was really neat to watch uh like look over and see your approach as well since mine m like i don't usually do this either i don't know if i have a like a every time i do this approach anymore mm -hmm. i'm always like trying different things because of all these uh schoolism lessons and workouts and yeah. stuff it's been fun but um huh. yeah with this one i was really just trying to just uh kind of have more of a chaotic start Mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. colors tones whatever let's slap them down and then let's try to mold them into something that looks good mm -hmm. i like that approach too because then you can kind of like you know when you like brain dump like whatever you feel like it's supposed to be because yes. sometimes the, the initial thought or initial thing that you put down is like everything's there it's just not like refined 
Yeah, you know, um, something interesting that I found with this technique, you know, when, because I love seeing that when people are just slapping down paint, you know, mm -hmm. right in the beginning, especially traditional, and you don't yeah. know what the heck is going on, and then all of a sudden it kind of materializes, and you're like, oh, I get it. I see what they're seeing now. Yeah. I love that, right? Um, and I always had a hard time with that. You see my wind zip? I got to, like, reinstall it <laughs> or something. Uh, yeah, so with this kind of chaotic approach, um, what I found to be very helpful was not to go to extremes, right? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't go to the extreme darks. I wouldn't go to the extreme lights. I would stay mm -hmm. very close to them. Um, but... I, I didn't go straight to the extremes because once you lay down the stuff, uh, if you have your extreme tones there already, it'll be hard to put down something else that will mm -hmm. stand out more than mm -hmm. those extreme tones because you have high contrast, right? So yeah. I slap it all down and then I use the higher contrast tones to tighten it up. That's mm -hmm. my thing now, you know? Mm -hmm. I found it very helpful. Yeah. Definitely want to use that last. I think um, with my approach that uh, I was also um, conscious of that, you know, trying to find the middle ground values. And then uh, because I separated the shadow and the light, then I can like res reserve the lightest lights and the darkest darks for those areas only. And then try to figure out like where they fall. Mm. Oh, it works very well. I, you know, you remember the furry creature in the tree one that we did yeah. not too long ago? Remember the head? I felt like the head, you straightened out the head a bit more and I tilted it too much or something mm -hmm. like that. And I feel like we do the exact same thing here. <laughs> yeah, I, I like, um, I guess people will see this later on, but I love the re your results because it adds like that, even the, that little tilt, it adds so much like personality to to your your character. So I I like how um yours isn't like a direct copy or direct study of our of our reference today. Thanks. Yeah, it's all on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess that's that's the good part about like kind of just like slapping things down is like you're getting more of the feel rather than getting the exact copy of our reference like i i love that approach but when i tried it earlier in my career it was just hard to keep the boat together mm. you know because it's like you're just okay we need a rudder we need some wood we need some you know a sail and you just throw it all in the water and you try to like kind of piece like it trying together. to flow as you're know. trying to like build the boat <laughs> yeah that's how it felt you know, and I mm. couldn't, I couldn't do it. But now looking back and doing this and really thinking about it for a while is because mm. I was putting down my extremes too quick. Mm. Mm -hmm. And then I couldn't, I couldn't hold it together afterwards, right? Because those extremes feel far more permanent. This is exactly where it should go, you know? Yeah. Um, I was going to ask for your first or personal, professional, whichever. Do you ever uh, do like color keys or like color studies before you actually yeah. do your painting? Yeah, I do, totally. I, I love the like monotonous process of it all. I love mm. all that boring stuff. <laughs> that's like, that's a really great thing to try to love. Mm-hmm. Right, because it, it really is in that process. Yeah, and I think it's like one of those things where um, it's like the foundation. It's like if you don't get that right, then later on you're going to struggle with trying to like fix things when it's not like because it's not established. Yeah, you know, uh, I just wanted to mention this one thing that kind of opened my mind up a while back. This was when I was trying to get into animation, the program, 
as shared in mm-hmm. college, right? Mm-hmm. And we had to have a part where it was with animal sketches. Mm. Yeah. And so I wasn't very good at drawing monkeys, but I really wanted to do these macaw uh, monkeys or whatever, or man- mandrill monkeys, sorry. Um, so every day when my mom would go driving to work, she, you know, work close to the zoo, I'd just say, drop me off and then pick me up when you get off of work. I spent eight hours a day drawing monkeys. Nice. But this is how much I appreciate and love the boring stuff. Because mm-hmm. for the first week, I only drew boxes. I looked at these monkeys and I drew their heads as a proportional kind of box, the best kind of shape, size box I could find. The body, mm-hmm. you know, the the um, the torso were two boxes, and that was it, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. For a week, eight hours a day, because I sucked. I wasn't good. Right, and that got me used to proportions as well as mm-hmm. three-dimensional kind of turning in space, you know, right. of these different proportions. Then the next week, I still didn't draw monkeys yet. I drew very loose gestures, trying to understand the typical positions of a monkey. Mm-hmm. Right, and then it was only in my like last two weeks that I actually drew monkeys. So did you plan this out? Like you knew that like you had to step by step. I didn't know anything, you know, but sometimes (laughs) the best way to find the right way is just to try Mm -hmm. as many ways as you can Mm -hmm. think of, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what I was doing. Uh, Mm -hmm. But those were the best freaking monkeys I ever drew. Like to that point. Hey, Bobby. Yay, how's it going? Awesome. Hey. Welcome. Just, uh, yeah, just a quick question. I was just wondering what made you start with boxes? Boxes because that is the most simplified version of structure, I felt. You could say a ball, right? But a sphere, mm-hmm. you can't really tell which direction it's pointing in. The planes? Did yes. anyone teach you that? Uh, you yeah, know? yeah. I learned, I learned the concept of boxes in um, in school, I forget which teacher, I think it was Werner Zimmerman. Uh, I think he still teaches part-time at Seneca College. My, my buddy, my friend, my mentor uh, when I was in school. Yeah, that guy's hardcore and I really appreciated that. That's something mm-hmm. that uh, Kim Jong-ji does a lot, right? That's the thing. If you want to learn how to draw or paint very complex things, you have to be able to. But you have to be able to look at very complex things in a very simplified way, Mm -hmm. right? Like, look at how K. uh, I was gonna say like K's new piece, which I should find and try to put it on screen. It is chaotic, right? There's all sorts of amazing things happening. But for for those people, yeah, for those people who don't know, Kay is uh, Bobby's wife and partner in crime, amazing artist. But yeah, when I saw this piece, my my eyes went so round and my jaw (laughs) like dropped. I was like, because and 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 the part where like Kay doesn't post too often, and she comes out with this like beautiful image i was like what the heck (laughs) she did it pretty quick too like it looks tight and stuff but when you look at some close-ups you can see how loose the paintings are Mm -hmm. right it's actually very loose i love it it's like something i haven't seen before but and it's very easy to absorb you know what i mean Mm -hmm. it's very easy to look at and so that's what I'm saying, like, l- part of being able to paint things or draw things that are very complex is being able to see them in a very simplified form. Mm-hmm. Right? So looking at a horse and seeing three boxes, that's a really good skill to have. Right? Yeah. Looking at a crowd and just seeing 
just a line, <laughs> you know, a, <laughs> a big thick line with some heads peeking out and some legs peeking out at the bottom, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. I remember um, back in school, I, I used to practice that whole box method by like, um, sometimes when you don't understand what you're looking at and um, you don't know how to break it down into simplified boxes, it would help to, well, for me, it helped to take a photo, turn down the opacity, and then draw boxes on top of the photo mm. and see, like, is this how it would, you know, form if I were to, like, break it down? Yeah. I think last week uh, I touched on uh, the fact that I, I like to trace. I like to trace mm -hmm. other people's stuff. I like to trace photos. I don't post any of this stuff. This is like just studies for me um, because it helps also not just to get into the mind of that artist, mm -hmm. but it, it helps to keep you more flexible in your, in your own art because you know, we're in the very beginning, it's like we're trying to develop this style so bad. Yeah. And then by the time you develop the style, it's ingrained in you so hard, that's hard mm -hmm. to get out of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And tracing is such a good way of doing that. Yeah. But you that, know what? That's a pretty question, if tracing is bad. Oh, also, yeah, questions I forgot to mention. Uh, slido.com if you go to slido.com it's in the bottom of the the video here you can go to hashtag chew stream and then um, type in your questions there and you don't have to sign up for an account you could do it anonymously it's super easy uh, and of course schoolism I want to mention that has been the most helpful I kid you not I'm totally like if genuine genuine I know I like I own the place and stuff <laughs> um but genuinely i did iris competes uh, artist workout got me out of a rut i started to look at things differently because i was painting her drawings right mm -hmm. forcing me to paint certain shapes certain details that i wouldn't really choose myself mm -hmm. and uh we've been doing we should probably stream some of this stuff. I know yeah. we were planning on doing it anyways, but we've been doing uh, Vouter Tulp's artist workout recently, mm -hmm. you and me, Masse. That one's a fun one. It's really difficult. fun, really fun, yeah. because he gives you specific challenges, mm -hmm. right? And the coolest thing about his workout is that there's this very obvious and genius progression Right, you can see on the side of, you know, for those of you that that um, have taken his course, his artist workout, you can see on the side, like the different weeks, the different kind of aspects of fundamentals or, or of art that he's concentrating mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. Right, so in the very first one, he's giving you all these value exercises, which we just did one yesterday that was like super challenging and awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and then week two, it's like, I think it's like hue or something like that. And week three is something else. It's great. Yeah. 60 some odd days. Yeah. Of exercise. Yeah. And like people, they don't need to do it 60 days straight. They can do like one lesson a week, you know, on their own time. Um, I think like doing that video and then you know, like what we did, we took a different reference and then applied what we learned. Yeah. Just to like, you know, make sure we uh, understand what we just learned. Yeah, we'll show everybody, we'll show everybody. Yeah. <laughs> those are really beneficial and really, really fun. Yeah. yeah. Hey, we got a question. By the way, Discord, I will ask the Discord group if you guys have any questions after we answer this one question, okay? So this is coming in from Slido. <clears throat> Anonymous asks, what would you say to a 12th grader who started drawing in the ninth grade and would like to reach your level of art artistry so that they can be an artist like you? <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, yeah, I wish I knew I wanted to be an artist in grade 12. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, started drawing in the ninth grade, though. Mm. Yeah, 
I I definitely think that you could do it. Mm-hmm. When yeah. did you when do you feel like you truly started to um started to understand painting and started to get into painting? Uh, when I started working for you uh, for imaginism because yeah. yeah um I mean so I went to Sheridan College for the animation program. I was there for 2 years. We did have painting class but because you know sometimes schools they just present everything to you and you're just trying to absorb everything left and right um painting wasn't really uh, a priority mm. um but uh yeah so when i worked at the studio and then when i started painting more things like i i feel like i understand the i understood the basics but it wasn't like there yet so i think i would say four three years ago two years ago wow holy i finally understood painting like and then just this year i'm finally understanding color so this this is like yeah years into when i actually started seriously taking art but painting wise that's like two years right two years <laughs> or something like that that's amazing yeah. that is really amazing that really shows your your dedication you know mm-hmm. and and like your effort it's awesome mm. man yeah. i should be doing better <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah uh, i think to that person um like we were talking about before uh, the fundamentals is very important. Um, it's kind of like the building foundation of an art piece or like just art itself. It's um, yeah. And you're, you're the proof where it's like, yeah, ninth grade, man, you got your whole life ahead of you. You can absolutely mm-hmm. get to whatever levels you want. Uh, mm-hmm. I feel right. Like as long as you have dedication, mm-hmm. uh, like Masse over um, here. <laughs> well, I guess it sounds like uh, this person is in the 12th grade, so maybe they're graduating this year. Oh, yes, but, yes. Um, S- started at ninth grade. Mm-hmm. That's what I meant. Um, maybe we can kind of segue into, like, like schools or, like, online school. What, what are good options? Uh, yeah, sure. You know, shoot. Hey, if, if first, if people have zero means to get any kind of education um this is the 18th artist workout that we did do them all i guarantee Mm -hmm. you you will get better you will feel the the kind of frustration and pain of thinking so hard but at the same time (laughs) you will see that you you've literally jumped leaps and bounds um after Mm -hmm. these 18 challenges that's for sure. Mhm. Mhm. Yeah. All right. So. Uh, yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, 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 no worries. Okay, I was gonna yeah. mention Discord because I was saying, "Hey guys, get your questions ready." Um, so, Discord peoples, hey y'all, anybody have a question for us? Hey, I do. <laughs> Again. Sure. Um, I was just wondering if there were any. Uh, courses in schoolism that you'd recommend that would be good for teaching world building skills world building um, well Nathan Fox definitely comes to mind uh, he's done all sorts of things that involve environments you know all sorts of projects and such um, mm-hmm. and one that I'm dying to try is his environment workout. I'm sure we'll get to it soon enough. Yeah. I would say. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, his last workout thing, color and light workout, it, it's quite popular. So I think I took that. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm assuming the next one is going to be just as good. Um, yeah, but you know, like even though Masse and I, we've both work generally on characters um we both also know how to 
build worlds and such. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I have a TV show built that world <laughs> or help to build it. How do you guys um, go about learning those skills? Um, you know what? It's I think it's really it's kind of like it's kind of like same way you learn style, right? You, you, it's right, like right. I almost don't look to um, I don't look for how to build a world. I, I think we've just both just constantly are looking for new information. Mm. Right. And there's a saying, I don't, I don't really know the saying, <laughs> but the, the gist of the saying is you master one thing, you master them all. Right. Mm -hmm. If you can master one thing, you kind of master them all. And what this means is like, okay, well, it's say you're a butcher. You master being a butcher, you've mastered anatomy, you would have to master anatomy. You would have to master, you know, the ways that you move your, your limbs and stuff to cut it just right. You would need to master psychology because of your, your customers and how to treat your customers. You know, if you truly master one thing, you generally master them all. And what's the difference between hair and grass? Not that much really it isn't that much right uh trees and a bushy afro honestly not that much either so there's all these things that can translate into other things um yeah i don't know that's probably not the answer you wanted uh well, i guess yeah no that generally just learning as much as i can will help influence building a world Yes, and besides that, it's like constantly tell stories, constantly mm -hmm. think of stories, constantly um, think about them from your target audience, you know, point of mm -hmm. view. Know your target audience. That's a big one too. There's no need to try to please everybody. <laughs> There's no point. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely want to have something that I enjoy doing. And so if people enjoy what I like to do the most, then that would be mm. awesome. Yeah. You just want to find that cross section of what people right. want and what you want, and then just do mm. that. Yeah, obviously be flexible. Like sometimes I like to paint some really weird stuff. But <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I, I don't think anybody would want to see it. So... I just don't post it. Um, but I realize as I'm saying this, I probably shouldn't have said that because now people think I'm painting some really, really weird stuff. So maybe I'll just show you. I kind of like some <laughs> weird stuff. <laughs> I don't want to. Yeah, there's different levels of weird. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> um, Never any <ending> levels. <laughs> so here's a weird stuff kind of painting I've just been doing. Like. I don't know. Ah, oh, uh, very different from what you normally do. Yeah, but it's just, you know what I was practicing here, Masse? It was after doing Vouder's um, exercise with the uh, different hues. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I was just like, oh, I just want to paint something and keep switching the hues around, keep using mm -hmm. the different kind of natural values of hues to mm -hmm. paint with. Mm -hmm. So I'm painting with all these different subtle kind of variations of hues. You know, awesome. and just practicing. Yeah. That was the point. So I guess it's not that strange, right? It's not that strange. <laughs> it's not. It's not maximum level of. Weird. Yes. Yes. It's not creepy <laughs> weird or something. It's just <laughs> randomness weird. Yeah. <laughs> I realized as I was saying the statement, I was like, ah, uh, people are gonna think I'm weird. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions from Discord? Um, hello. Hello. Hi. Um, I want to ask, how do you, uh, how do you make yourself feel confident to take the base color? Because sometimes when I start, uh, coloring my painting, I have already, a, uh, I have imagined a big picture of it. But when I started picking color, 
uh, and started coloring in the middle of the process, I feel something wrong and sometimes it makes me not confident to finish it or I need to redo all of the all of the stuff in my painting. Um, so do you have any advice? Uh, Azalea, we're with you, I think. I could, I could say like half the time, I, there's <coughs> always a point in my painting where I'm like, what the hell am I doing? Yeah. This is not gonna look very good. But I guess just going through that fire so many times, I mm -hmm. have this confidence that okay that's all good i don't think this is gonna work out but i'm gonna keep going down the path and keep doing the process and it'll work out um, what about yeah. you masse do you go through that like you must go through that as well no oh halfway <laughs> where i'm like oh man what am i doing can i just like go back and redo it or just start a new piece yeah yeah i i definitely do um i guess for the color part uh one way I learned to feel more confident about the colors I pick, um, these studies have been helping. And on my own time, I also do quick studies that I, you know, of photos I find on Pinterest. And just because then I don't have to think about my, like what colors I want to choose for my own personal stuff. I, and I'm just like looking at a photo and trying to break that down. Once I am able to understand that in my studies, then I'm able to later apply that into my <clears throat> my own personal work. So, um, yeah, studies. We should me. totally do those router talk studies and stream a bunch as part of the 90 minute uh, challenge. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe mm -hmm. next week we could mm -hmm. do a couple of those because that would help uh, Azalea mm -hmm. big time. You know, because yeah. Yeah. those workouts, that's exactly what they do. They strengthen your uh, comprehension, your ability to, uh, ability to visualize colors um, and understand how to use them. Mm. And how about the light when you were, when you were painting something? something uh, sometimes I also get confused about the light. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. The fundamental. Yeah. If you if you have a schoolism subscription, it, it, that would be painting mm -hmm. with light and color with Tonko House. Um, oh, yeah. There's a bunch of them actually. Yeah. Sam Nielsen's is fantastic as well. F Fundamentals of light and color. Um, mm -hmm. He really explains to you the theory, the science behind it. Uh, mm -hmm. Tonko House's mm -hmm. is far more kind of brings you into this practical realm. Mm -hmm. um, and then Nathan Faux, his is much more about conscious designing decisions, mm -hmm. which, you know, segue to shameless plug, subscribe on Schoolism. If people subscribe <laughs> on Schoolism, they can access all the art courses. Uh, currently, there's 39. Okay. But, yeah, Thank there you, you go. So much. You're yeah. very welcome. Yeah. Um, I guess I could add one more thing. Now sure, that I yeah, reminded yeah. me of uh, Tonko House's class, um, I guess to pick the base color, uh, I learned from Tonko House to pick the, to like, not think about the the colors that are the light that are affecting the object, but try to establish the base color first, and then then you can add things on top of that, and that's like um, what helped me understand like. Yeah, which color to use from the very beginning. Oh, uh, yeah, another thing is, oh, somebody's asking Discord. Discord is in the bottom of the screen there. It's the Lightbox Expo Discord server. That's what we're going to be using from now on. Um, oh, uh, so, yeah, going on your point, Masse, when people are thinking about their objects kind of like, in the overcast sky, cloudy sky scenario. That's what, you know, uh, Dice and Robert talk about in the Tonko House course that we're talking mm -hmm. about. Um, I always found it helpful to just kind of think, okay, can I make a decent looking painting with just solid colors, no light? That's what we're looking for to start off with. Right, Masse? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm because you can choose colors that don't go together, 
right, as your base colors, and they don't go together. Mm -hmm. So you want to think about it like that, like if you put pure white, like extreme just white with this other tone, like does that look like it, it, under a cloudy sky condition? Would the white be that white? It could, because you can change the exposure, right? But um, probably not. You know, you mm -hmm. probably want to think about that. Mm -hmm. We have some bunch of great questions coming into uh, Slido here. And you can keep them coming at slido.com, hashtag choose stream. You can type something in anonymously, or you can upvote questions, or you could put your name. So Anonymous says here, um, I see you're using custom brushes in Magma, which I know is coming in the studio version. Do you know when they'll be released or and or pricing? So um, we haven't set an exact date, but it should be next month. So next yeah. month is just a few days away, right? Oh, shoot, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pricing, um, not exactly, like, we, ha we have an idea, um, but I don't know if I'm supposed to say it yet, so I'm just not going to say it for now, uh, but the pricing is like, you just pay that one price, and then that's it, you know, you're going to get all the new updates coming along, and, mm -hmm. and everything else. Is that a yearly subscription or a monthly subscription? You could do both. You could do both. I believe that's how we're setting it up. That's good. Yeah. Um, yeah, and if you guys are on Discord, please mute your mics if you're not talking. So I hear a bunch of little rustling around, if you don't mind. Thank you so much. Um, next question from Slido. And then we could go back to Discord and check in with Discord, okay, guys? So you could get your mics ready. Uh, this next question is from Anonymous. I am great at imitating. I struggle at original art, though. What exercises should I do? That's a really good question, by the way. Do you want to go first, Masse? Um, I guess I would say if, let's just say this, study right here if you're good at imitating the lighting the, the form the expression take that and create a whole new character a whole new you know setting but apply the same basic like lighting color and you know that that will become original totally and that's a great kind of a uh, path to slowly becoming more and more kind of conceptual as opposed to uh, you know imitating or so-called copying things mm -hmm. right we can we have so many different modes of thinking we could look at something and just kind of copy the exact tone of it the exact shape of it and not really think about much of anything else mm -hmm. right um, or, you know, we could do the study where afterwards you don't know how to paint this kind of lighting scheme at all. You know, you could, you could brainlessly kind of copy, copy, copy. But if you are painting this while thinking, okay, how is this working? How could I apply this? How do these colors relate to all these other colors? How do these brush strokes relate to these brush strokes? How do these details, you know, and so on and so mm -hmm. forth, really understanding the world, right? And that will gear you towards this path of um, conceptualizing things as opposed to copying things, making things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, Masse, I have to say that I feel like you started from uh, the path of like making things, creating things. And now, like, through the couple years of you painting, <laughs> mm -hmm. you've been really concentrating on more of that, like, 
quote unquote imitation side of things, right? And mm -hmm. understanding the relationships there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I I feel like I came from what this person's saying. I came from a love of really copying things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I yeah. I guess um because I've been doing more studies, I see like the benefits of it because. Um, like you're saying, you know, try to break things down as you paint, like try to actually understand what you're seeing. Um, Cause like little things like in this image, like why is the nose the only part that's highlighted? It's because the, the form is sticking out and everything else is hid under the shadow. Um, like why is this part receiving light? It's like, oh, it's cause the light is coming from this way. Um, Sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, <laughs> no, I totally, I totally get it. Yeah. Say, I just want to, like, it's like, you're not just blindly, okay, here's a light tone. I'm going to put down a light mm -hmm. tone. Here's a dark tone. I'm gonna, you know, you're thinking, well, this light tone is here because, mm -hmm. right? And this dark oh, yeah, tone yeah. is here because the nose has blocked the light from hitting the, the yeah. upper lip area. Yeah. Right. And All right. So. Yeah. Oh, go sorry. Ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. I was, I was just about to say. So knowing that, it's like when I go to my own original stuff, it's like I have that all stored in my mind, and I'll be able to apply that into my own art. Yeah. So, Can I just yeah. comment about <laughs> how this painting is going? You know, for the last yeah. like twenty minutes or so, um, you are so far ahead. You're so <laughs> far ahead, and I noticed that, right? Watch this. Like before, it was. Look how much detail you got already. Oh my gosh! <laughs> look at my side. It's just a blurry thing, right? That's pretty neat. I thought that was really neat to kind of see. And through this whole entire time, I'm like, okay, I feel like I'm behind. That's what I feel. Mm. Like. You know, because also. The way that you painted the shirt, even though I feel like, you know, there's kind of like more, maybe slightly more uh, brush mileage on my shirt, yeah. your shirt works just like that, even. If you just left it like that, I would, mm -hmm. I'd be like, yeah, that works. Mm -hmm. You know, now when you mentioned that, that just reminded me a bunch of um, concept artists for movies who, where artists do that they like just put down a simple like blocked in shadow shape like that and they don't touch it they just leave it as is and then they focus on the the main area which is generally the the face there's a really cool kind of appeal to that mm -hmm. right because it's like then you really sense the the simplicity of their thinking um how they're able to distill things in such a simple just a simple statement um mm -hmm. yeah it's it's really really fun to see and a lot of times you do that the directors you know art directors they really appreciate that because they're like oh wow Masay is really going fast you know, <laughs> look at this she only she could only finish the face she just handed this in and just like here's the thought it's already complete i'm not gonna finish the shirt here you go yeah Right, because yeah. <laughs> you're on to another concept. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you already got it's, that. It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> See, I am like, okay, I need to motor, so I started to put in those eyes very quick. I started to put in the the red light really quick. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's kind of almost like how it's been these last bunch of exercises where. In the very beginning, you pull ahead, and then <laughs> at the very end, I catch up. Yeah, you like sprint at the very last part. But <laughs> but when you say that, it's it's really interesting because you it, within that short amount of time, you just put a few marks in, and then everything just like comes out, like it comes to life. So I think that's the really cool part about um, like when you paint, and also like kind of like shining light about you know, reserving the lightest light or like the highest contrast stuff for last because that's what's um that's what 
bring that that's what pulls the painting together definitely definitely yeah. and by doing it like this it allowed me to make changes all the way to the end very easily because mm -hmm. there isn't as much contrast mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. notice the top of the shirt you see like just above those two little red fingers in the photo yeah it's not even there on mine and mm. if people notice at the very end I don't actually fill the shirt all the way to the top. I just put a little light mark, right? Just above those fingers, and I put in the fingers. I don't actually fill in the shirt. Mm. So. Yeah. That But that was in a panic. You know, that's like, okay, I only have like a minute left. <laughs> no, I, I think it turned out great. Yeah, and just, you know, again, that short amount of time to add those little marks brings it all together, which kind of says something about, you know, working on the base of everything, like really building that, that foundation and then adding the little touches is what kind of what um, makes a good painting. Mm -hmm. But obviously this is just one way of painting, not saying that this is like an approach that everyone should do for every painting that they do. Totally. Um, let's go on to another question, shall we? Hassan Hi, says, ahead. actually, there's been, there was like some questions. There was this question from a little while ago, just for you, question from Masse, from Matt. Were there any exercises that you found particularly helpful in improving your color selection? Um, from our artist workout one. Mm. or any schoolism classes or anything books, uh, whatever um sorry the question was how to improve my color selection yes how did you improve your color selections mm, i think so the way i kind of like build up to that was uh, I first took Tonko House's uh, painting class, which made me understand about like practical ways of painting. Um, I mean, obviously they touch on like color and lighting and all that. Um, but Nathan's class is what like really made me understand like, oh, like temperature differences and like the hues and the environment and the subtleties of color. So I think just taking that class um, enhanced my understanding for color. Because um, I think the great part about uh, the classes that we have is even though it touches on the same subject, all the teachers have different ways of teaching it and different ways of, and you can you know absorb it in different ways. So I think that's how, that's like the great part about taking learning from different teachers about the same same subject for sure couldn't mm -hmm. agree more let's go on to the next question here and then uh and then we'll come back to discord okay so next question is from jeff the chef it says <laughs> hello bobby i'm gonna say you guys rock my question is a two-parter so my question for you is how can one how can one know that, that they're getting their fundamentals correct? Mm. I think that's where classes come in, you know, cause mm -hmm. it's like, you can try your hardest every day. And that's probably what cavemen did and cave women. Mm -hmm. And you can get <laughs> a certain level. And yeah, those cave drawings, I was just talking with somebody else about this, but those cave drawings are freaking beautiful. But I'm just saying, you can only get to a certain level by yourself, right? Mm -hmm. When you learn from somebody else, like like my new course, my new digital painting class on schoolism is an accumulation of like all the years of digital painting, which now is like around 20 years distilled into what, nine weeks, right? So learning from other people is the ultimate shortcut to uh, improvement and on Massey's point it's heavily important 
to constantly search for other knowledge, other ways of doing the exact same thing even. That's very, very helpful because through that you get options and through that you're able to make choices and those choices all of a sudden accumulate to becoming you know, your, your style, right? Like don't think of what kind of style do people want. Just think, be yourself, search for knowledge. Style develops through knowledge. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you want to add to that? Mm -hmm. You're good. <laughs> um, showing, getting feedback, critiques. Yeah. Beneficial, even if you're scared, just do it anyways. <laughs> hey, and, and by the way, uh, Discord people, that's what the Discord server's for, mm -hmm. getting feedback. You know, getting constructive yeah. feedback. Yeah. Like I remember the internet before it was all about likes. It was about constructive feedback. You would actually mm -hmm. post your artwork not to get likes and comments, but you would get mm -hmm. it for critiques. You would post it up for critiques. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we're bringing back with uh, the Discord server. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's great. Just like you know, getting different perspectives and all that. And I guess um, obviously critiques is one of those things that you pick and choose what you feel like is helpful for you because mm -hmm. not all critique is good critique. <laughs> Darn too. <So>, yeah. <laughs> Darn too. <laughs> Anyways, um, I wonder if this is a good time to ask Discord people if they have any questions. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, yeah, can I? Sure. Yeah. Hi, guys. Actually, um, I must say hi, Bobby. Hi. <laughs> um, I might have talked to Noah and Kofi about this, Patricia. I can't remember who, but it, it's about um, yeah. I'm subscribed to Schoolism, but I rarely uh end up using it, and I think part of that is because when I do a class and uh, I do the home do the homework or do a part of it. I don't know whether or not I've done it correctly, if that makes sense. And so I don't mm -hmm. feel like I, and so I wonder, or I question whether or not I should move on to the next one. And I was wondering if maybe you could perhaps give some. Yeah, sure. Do you when... watch, do you watch the feedback videos as well? Because those can be, like, even more helpful. I do watch the feedback videos and stuff, uh, uh, but it's still sort of like, have I taken on this class? Have I done mm. this correctly or not? And I just constantly sort of question and wonder myself uh, that. And so... <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, um... Bad case of self-doubt and stuff, but you know. Hey, it <laughs> happens with everybody. You know, it's perfectly normal. Uh, mm. This... Hopefully this will become a good place as well, the Discord server, to see if you did the right, you know, things the right way. Because um, in the upcoming weeks, we're also going to be encouraging the schoolism population, the schoolism community, to also join the Lightbox Expo Discord server. Um, so then you guys can help each other out with, uh, you know, assignments and things like that. Add. Um, I think to add to the whole like question of like, am I, did, did I absorb everything like enough or did I do this properly? Like, did I do the assignment properly? Um, I, I definitely know that feeling because, um, when I've taken like Craig's, uh, Craig Mullen's class, for example, um, even though I did all this, the homework and I got feedback, I, I felt that like, it's like, oh, did I put enough effort? Did, did I actually learn something? Um, when that happened, I kind of just went to, um, I tried to absorb as much as I can, but at the same time, I went to a different class and watched another one to, you know, absorb new things. And then when I, when I felt like it was time, I went back to the class and rewatched the videos to reabsorb. And then I, it's kind of like, um, reinforcing what I learned. So uh, I guess long story short is 
it's okay to move on to the next class and come back to that old class because there are times when you miss certain things and you you just you know learn it again the next time you go back yeah yeah i went from iris's uh iris competes uh, artist workout to vouter's workout i didn't finish her workout i still plan on finishing it but now i'm mm -hmm. on vouter's and i'm already thinking about nathan's <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> yeah like um like I, I'm pretty sure I rewatched Taco House's classes like two or three times. Yes, Craig's class for three sure. times. Yes. Um, and every time I'm just like, I missed that. How did I miss that? Okay, mm -hmm. now I'm putting it into my knowledge box. You know. <laughs> Victor Kalvachev's is another one where it's like you probably want to watch that at least two times. Mm, you, which one? Victor Kalvachev's. Oh yes, Victor Kalvachev. Because he has so many kind of little gems you know of knowledge that he drops and techniques and ways of looking at things mm -hmm. you know uh, you need to yeah you need to revisit those sometimes yeah and i guess um trying to just get over that fear of like did i do it right but everyone always gets better every time they do stuff so i think it's just remembering that it's like a constant uh, journey and it, it gets a bit easier to you know get past that fear yeah really like concentrate on enjoying the parts that are the most helpful to really enjoy you know it's not that helpful to enjoy winning the award for example <laughs> <laughs> right it's far more helpful to really enjoy the process of making that painting or that process of figuring out that shot for your film or you know things like that so that's what i try to concentrate on i try to concentrate on actually not really um being excited about the thing that actually won't help me out being excited about that you know like am i gonna win that thing am i gonna get that job i don't care <laughs> you know i am just having fun drawing myself as one punch man and you know just like enjoying the process which by the way yeah. I, I i had so much fun doing that little painting <laughs> yeah that was a good one it, i i i heard the excitement in your voice when you were like do you want to see my painting <laughs> <laughs> i was like yeah <laughs> if you're excited about it then i'm excited about it oh. quick question how did you make the mouth move on that oh so what i did was um yeah i just i just erased i just use a soft edge brush erase the mouth area right and then i did i did uh a video trying to hold my head as still as possible saying everything and i yeah. just put it behind like in the same angle yeah that's or... great yeah that's such a classic <laughs> move yeah <laughs> It was like the perfect lighting too. It is very classic. I, I it's gotta like from say. SpongeBob or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Dude, it is like far before SpongeBob. When yeah. I was, a little <laughs> I was thinking kid. actually like Monty Python or something. Like that. <laughs> yeah. That was really fun. Bringing out the old tricks. Yeah, I just wanted to mention this one. Hassan, he wrote, doesn't have a question. I'm really thankful for the Iris uh, workshop, the Iris uh, compete fairy workout on schoolism it gave me so much confidence and pr also provided me to practice digital painting what i was learning at schoolism oh that's awesome combined combined the knowledge that's great that's so great to hear here's another one um oh okay this was you know that person i said this is a two-parter question oh yes yes i guess this is the second part so jeff the chef I find the consensus is to trust yourself and get good feedback from peers, which is what you said to say, uh, that really know their stuff. But I find it to be unrealistic. Mm. Any thoughts? Like unrealistic to get good feedback from peers. Maybe you're just asking the wrong peers. I definitely have lurked and stuff in the chew stream, you know, chats and things like that. and. There is a lot of really good feedback. Um, mm -hmm. Big shouts out to Patricia for running the Discord server. Uh, 
always bring a good vibe to the community. Yeah, thank you guys. And also, yeah, there are a lot of lovely people there. <laughs> totally. You know, it, it really is about helping each other. Like, mm -hmm. the people that help each other are going to far surpass the people that are just like, keeping everything to themselves and you know not telling anybody their little quote-unquote secrets and stuff right mm -hmm. um here's one from anonymous and then we'll go to discord okay discord peoples uh, this one is from anonymous saying i'm about to graduate from high school and i want to get into uh, an art major but i still don't know what art career should i take ah this is something that I'm sure a lot of people go through. So uh, for me, like what I wanted to do when I was thinking about schools was I want to learn how to paint and draw really well technically. Right. So mm -hmm. when I was going through those halls of Sheridan College and everything, I would see the artwork that was done by the illustration department, the animation department both were good it's just that I was really enamored by the technical skills of the animation department and the perspective going the layouts was what really got me interested Masei it mm -hmm. wasn't characters at all mm -hmm. it was like those oh, yeah. beautiful blue drawing layouts that people would do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, perhaps look through a bunch of the the art that has been done by former students to really understand what that course is going to teach yeah. yeah and see if that's what you want to go into yeah if their portfolios is just like a bunch of um uh, used furniture with painted vibrant arrows all over them you know that's going to be more kind of installations abstract you got it <laughs> You want to learn how to explain that your art is art. You know, that would be the mm -hmm. course for you, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I guess research, doing a lot of research of former students, mm -hmm. um, what they do in class, uh, maybe their, pre, uh, their portfolio to get into the program, yeah. and then seeing what artists in the industry right now, like what school did they go to? But also, there's like a lot of artists who either didn't even go into art school or came in from like an engineering background. Um, so, you know, there's not like one one way to get into the industry. And try just, to find out just, what they've done in the industry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's entertainment art, if they worked in television or film, there's IMDb. That's very simple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look at how long they've been doing stuff and when was the last time they did something current? Mm -hmm. I think that's very important because um, there's a lot of amazing teachers out there that haven't done really anything. And so you could look at the students for that, right? And yeah. you can kind of see how, how effective is their teaching. But also there's there's teachers where it's like, you get the hint that they stopped learning perhaps or something mm -hmm. and the demand has dried up and now mm -hmm. they've resorted to teaching you know mm -hmm. there's both scenarios so you, you got to be very cognizant of the, the people that you're learning from because if you learn from a bad teacher it is worse than not having a teacher at all yeah you know, oh yeah, that wall, you can run through that wall. You just gotta run harder towards that wall. You know, that's a really bad teacher. Yeah. <laughs> you probably would have figured it out yourself just going, mm, this wall is probably not for me. That was really hard. I don't wanna run harder at it. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm just gonna hurt more. Yeah. <laughs> like you're not making me like this the whole concept. <laughs> yeah bad habits it's like oh, where did you learn this from oh, i learned this in mm -hmm. school 
oh man why i know yeah. why this person taught you this it's because they think this about whatever but they're totally wrong you need to stop doing that mm-hmm. right and then i'll see in my digital painting classes that they keep doing that though because that's what they're mm-hmm. used to right? and then all of a sudden you have to almost go in reverse and start going okay mm-hmm. let's let's back it up let's start at mm-hmm. this point and start teaching you now mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah hey, by the way i'm catching back up i'm catching back up now it's starting to look like something yeah it's looking awesome <laughs> thank goodness jeez uh, your your wrinkle of the eyebrow i mean not the eyebrow the, the forehead is like it's nice there's like actual like there's a direction of which way the head's pointing mine is just like a (laughs) like a big squiggle well that's that's interesting too because like you know um i think we both approach painting in both of our different ways at some point or another like i've definitely approached my painting in the way that you did yours today uh what i found with like there's difficulties, challenges in both. The challenges I found in your way is just that everything is so defined right away in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So it's harder to make changes. Yeah. Mine's more like wishy-washy in the beginning and it starts to kind of focus in. So it's easier to make changes, but it's harder to keep it all together. Mm. Yeah. That's that's interesting. The our two different approaches. Yeah, because like think, you're. Um, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to just say like, because you put down such, um, kind of distinct marks in the very beginning, that makes it much easier to kind of keep it together when you go with that approach as well. Because mm-hmm. then you could just mm-hmm. look for landmarks and go, okay, I'm over there now. This is what I'm going to do, as opposed to mine yeah. where it's like all fuzzy. And you're like, there are no landmarks. Okay, it's kind of over here. How do you start with that, right? Yeah. I think um, now that I'm watching myself repaint, or sorry, watching myself paint this, um, this approach, it's, for me, it was a bit more difficult to get the form, like, right. Because, like you said, I kind of, like, decided everything, defined everything in the beginning. So I couldn't just, like, you know, like, oh, let's nudge this form this way. So it's like this angle instead of like this angle. Um, yeah, so, you know, benefits to both ways. Uh, it's a learning experience. And you don't uh, even have to choose one way over the other. You could do yeah. hybrid versions, mm-hmm. right? So you really define certain things and everything else is wishy-washy. By the way, mm-hmm. you see what I was talking about? I didn't finish that shirt. I just did a little, you know, lighter green over top of those red fingers there. Yeah. Then, yeah, your brain will just kind of piece it all together anyways. I love that part. I totally forgot about the fingers. I forget. I, I pretty much forget about at least one thing every challenge that we've done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember but one I... time I forgot ears. I forgot ears on the Joker one. Uh, yeah, but I mean, I guess it's a bit difficult knowing that there's only 90, 90 minutes to <laughs> paint a lot of information. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. I really like <laughs> it. It's like this intense yeah. thinking uh, for 90 minutes, but then mm-hmm. when you're done the 90 minutes, then you're done. Not when you're done the painting, right? So that's nice for me to just go oh well whatever i did my 90 minutes i did my workout i went to the gym i feel good mm-hmm. <laughs> all right why don't we go to one more question we'll go back to discord so um anonymous says i struggle with having no motivation to draw despite wanting to uh or being overly critical of any work i get done do you have any ideas on how to overcome it well that first one being overly critical of any work that you get done you're putting the focus into the wrong things you know like 
how hard did you try at it? That's the focus, right? If you did an awesome painting or drawing and you didn't really try that hard, it's almost like shame on you, you know? Like, that's how I feel, generally. I mm -hmm. wouldn't even want to post that if I didn't put effort into it. Mm -hmm. Right? And so just keep at it. It's like, like I keep kind of referring to it kind of like going to the gym, uh, learning art. Sometimes, especially in the beginning, all your muscles are little tiny, little, you know, kid muscles and you can't lift anything really. You can't lift much. <laughs> right you go into the gym you see all the muscly people that have been painting and drawing and super fit artistically and you try to do what they do and it doesn't work out and you feel bad but things are happening if you keep deciding to try to go for those heavy weights you keep putting that effort and still that weight does not move off the bar you can't even lift it eventually there'll be a day where you kind of budget Mm -hmm. And then the next day where you kind of lift it, right? Mm -hmm. And then you do one rep and then you keep going. And then all of a sudden you're pushing that weight like nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, believe it. Analogy. Yeah. You know, you, you got to be um, passionate about your work. You got to <laughs> psych yourself up. You got to. <laughs> do you ever psych yourself up, Masse? When you're feeling less motivated? I'm trying to think. I think I try. <laughs> <laughs> or I get other people. Like, you you help me out, definitely. Like, your energy and you're like, <laughs> yeah, we're going to do this. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then when I do it, I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm naturally very intense with my energy. Yeah. I know that. <laughs> Yeah, so, I try to crank yeah. it down. I try to keep it in check. <laughs> um, I think I think um, because I get affected very easily, like emotionally. So like when you're very excited, then I get excited. So it's like it does help when I have you around. Uh, well, hey, right back at you. <laughs> You have been motivating me tons today and every one of these uh, challenges here. It's been exciting. It's been like I'm looking forward to every single one of them with you. So thank mm. you so much. Uh, mm. And the painting's done. Yay. Can we talk Do about we... this painting for a second? Yeah. And things that you yeah. felt were interesting, things that you felt maybe people should look out for lessons mm -hmm. that you might have learned from this mm -hmm. um you can go first if you think sure for me it's the chin the chin is not defined at all right it's i thought that was so interesting that the mm -hmm. chin is so not defined right like when you really look at the lines the distinct like details here mm -hmm. It's like the chin gets kind of green and then kind of just gets a little fuzzy darkness and then it's done. Mm. Right? I thought that was really kind of challenging and interesting. Yeah. Yeah. The other I... interesting part was the hair and how light and how blue the hair got. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a black based, you know, color based object. And how light mm -hmm. that thing gets is also very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, like, yeah, the whole thing about the everything from the mouth down, where it just like all blends into like one value. That that was pretty cool. And then it kind of says something about like, so there's so much focus here, but then this uh, forehead expresses so much like emotion and story. So that that's a good way of storytelling is just um, putting less focus here and more concentrate up here. So in like, it kind of taught me like, oh, maybe in my paintings, I should focus more on what I want the audience to look at rather than like this corner or like this unimportant area. Yeah. And 
the other thing I really liked about this uh, exercise was that for me, I chose to only use the default brush. So mm. for me to do any texture, I started to think of different ways to do texture. There's many different ways that you can do it with just the default brush, like the hair, the hair texture I did. But also you can notice like on the collar of the shirt, I'm using a very small brush. And I didn't really use it very well. You know, those lighter areas where I kind of scribble mm -hmm. in the light. I liked that. I felt like that, that was the beginning of something that I would like to delve into more, where it's like, yeah. I'm still using the default brush, but I'm like, generally I paint with a, a brush size where it's like, if it was any bigger, it wouldn't be effective. It would be too mm. large. But mm -hmm. instead, I feel like there's something there that I want to experiment with where it's like, choose a much smaller brush than what you need and then try to, you know, do something with that. Mm -hmm. Right, and just switching it up. Uh, yeah. That was fun. Um, another thing I liked about this painting was like, I guess the, the, how the skylight affects the subject as well. Yeah. And it's very subtle, like the, the blues and mm -hmm. like, it's like, like a bitish, I guess, sorry, a bit of like bluish purple kind of a uh, hue. Yeah, so that was really cool. We're using, like, when you think about what colors people would choose when they're in grade six for skin color, right? You wouldn't choose these colors. Mm -hmm. That was really fun about this painting too. Yeah. Using greens, using like very vibrant orangey reds, uh, teal, that kind of stuff to, to paint skin yeah that was, that was a, difficult yeah really great um learning outcome mm -hmm. well and that's it that's that's our show for today so i just wanted to thank our wonderful audience for tuning in and doing this with us thank um you. everybody in discord my wonderful co-host masay and yeah. when are we doing this Again, we're going to be painting and drawing all day tomorrow. So come yeah. join us. The Lightbox Expo Discord server is now officially you know, reopened. And we are just going to paint and draw in here all day, every day. <laughs> I don't know who wooed, but yay. I think that was Patricia's <laughs> woohoo. It <laughs> sounded like... I sound like her. It was me. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, so it's a totally free event. Invite your friends, mm -hmm. invite your family, invite your teachers, coworkers, whoever, and just we're gonna come together, hang out, chill out, yeah. do a bunch of drawings, do a bunch of painting. Should we wear a costume? Yeah, I will say. Yeah. That. <laughs> yeah. yeah great Halloween theme. Hey, bonus! If you wear a costume, a uh, big time bonus. All right. Bob, Bobby, are we going to expect you to wear your costume? The One Punch Man one? <laughs> <laughs> Only or if I cave. speak through the mouth area. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I guess. All right, Trouble. everybody. Well, this has been fun. And uh, yeah. we'll catch everybody uh, yeah. tomorrow. If not tomorrow, then it's going to be Monday. Monday. We're going to do another, um, you know, 90 minute art challenge. Mm -hmm. Number 19. Number 19. All right. Take care, everybody. Have a good Bye. rest of your day. Thank you. You Bye. too. Thank you. Thank you, Bobby.